Okay, let's just jump right into the quadrilateral game. Now, all these are drawn to look like squares, but they're not. You've got to look at the tick marks or the angle marks or anything on there. So they all could be classified as quadrilaterals, but I want the most descriptive. So we'll just start, jump right into it. It's a fun game. My students um, enjoy it or make them enjoy it, and I hope you like it too. Well, this one, we've got one pair of opposite sides congruent. I could do this, but I can also stretch it around like this. This is a classic case of a parallelogram. Paral um, one of the five ways to determine a parallelogram. Both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. Well, now we can speed it up. and You see how this game's played. All I've got is angle marks here. I've got two pairs of congruent angles but they're adjacent pairs. Now, it reminds me of something in the triangle world. It reminds me of an isosceles triangle because in fact, this is a property of an isosceles trapezoid. Two pairs of congruent base angles, which would be adjacent angles. Well, here we go with four congruent sides. Four congruent sides, but nobody said anything about the angles. Uh-huh. What would that be? Well, that can only be a rhombus. Well, what we've got here, we've got two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel, which makes it a parallelogram, but we've got this right angle in the corner. And we know well, opposite angles of parallelogram are congruent, and adjacent angles are supplementary. This is a classic case of a rectangle. You can say a Lambert rectangle. There you go. That is a rectangle. Well, two pairs of opposite sides makes this a parallelogram, but there's more because I've got a, a pair of adjacent sides congruent, and that's going to make transitive property all the sides congruent, which is going to make this a rhombus, a parallelogram with a pair of adjacent sides congruent rhombus. Hmm. Well, this one's interesting. I've got three congruent sides and nothing else. You know what that makes this? Absolutely nothing. I could just move this around like this. Oh, I don't know. I, I'm looking at this shape and all I can see is that it's got four sides. This is just plain quadrilateral. Well, all we've got here is opposite angles are congruent. Two pairs of opposite angles congruent. And we recall that that is classic parallelogram. Well, let's interpret these marks. Hmm. The diagonals bisect each other and are congruent. Well, that's two conditions. Um, the fact that the diagonals bisect each other makes it a parallelogram. The fact that they are also congruent is going to make it a rectangle, to be more specific. There you go. And one little side note on this, um, that's why the rectangle can be inscribed in a circle. Well, this looks a lot like the last one. And then we said, well, parallelogram, di diagonals bisect each other. But we said it was also upgraded to a rectangle because the diagonals are congruent as well. But this one gets a further upgrade because the diagonals, in addition to being congruent and bisecting each other, they are perpendicular. That's going to make this a square. All right, more diagonals. Again, with the parallelogram, because the diagonals bisect each other, this time we're going to say, well, diagonals are perpendicular. That does make it a rhombus. Remember our discussion, we have four congruent right triangles formed. But because the diagonals are not the same, See, then it's just going to be a rhombus. I would need to have matching tick marks. I'd need the diagonals congruent to turn that rhombus into a rectangle, which would make it a square. But this one is just going to be a rhombus. Well, these diagonals are perpendicular as well, but these diagonals do not bisect each other. This is not congruent to this. They don't bisect each other. No, no, no. But it's still something special. Diagonals are still congruent because this plus this equals this plus this. Congruent diagonals, perpendicular, and they don't bisect each other. 
You have to look back at our discussion of this figure. Yes, the isosceles trapezoid. Right there. Oh, another pair of perpendicular diagonals. Hmm. No tick marks. You know what that means? Absolutely nothing. Hmm. Oh, I see. It was a four-sided polygon. All I've got is a quadrilateral. Nothing else. Well, here we go with another pair of diagonals that's perpendicular. And only one is a bisector. See, this segment, where this diagonal is being bisected, dividing two equal. So that tells me, at first, I might be thinking rhombus. But, see, these two don't match. So all I've got to do is go... And you can see right away that what we've got here is a kite. Hmm. One pair of sides that's parallel makes it look like a trapezoid. But now the non-parallel sides are congruent. By definition, we call those the legs. So a figure that has one pair of parallel sides and congruent legs would be an isosceles trapezoid. Oh, thought we were done with diagonals. Well, let's look at this one. I don't see any perpendicular diagonals. They're not congruent. But going back to the basics, they bisect each other. And that means something. They bisect each other. That's the classic definition of a parallelogram. If I move it around like this, I can see no matter what I've got, how I move it. I've got a parallelogram. One congruent pair of angles, adjacent angles. Well, wonder what that gives us. Well, if you said nothing, you're absolutely right. I mean, what is it? You could make anything out of this shape. Oh, I mean, I did, could you make it concave, but sticking to convex, I see I've got nothing but a quadrilateral. Hmm. Two pairs of sides that are both parallel. You better all get this. That's classic parallelogram. That's the most common of the definitions. You learned that one back in grade school. This is a parallelogram. Hmm. Four congruent angles. Now we have to think about it here. I know the sum of these angles is 360. If they're all congruent, they're each 90. Ah, that was a trickster. So they're all right angles. And this is a rectangle. I've got one pair of sides, opposite sides it is, that's both parallel and congruent. That's one of the five classic ways to determine a parallelogram. And finally, we have this figure, um, two pairs of adjacent congruent sides. That's the very definition of a kite. So there you go. Easy, easy, easy. And we're going to end with this one and um, hope you've enjoyed playing our little game and we'll expand this for next year.